Welcome to Knock Curiosity. In our last video on dairy products, we have seen some basic steps involved in the production of dairy products. If you have not seen that video, the link is provided in the description below. In that video, I had asked you a question that how are cheese, butter and yogurt different even when they are produced from milk. Now, we will start one by one. First, when you see milk, you can see two things. If the milk is settled for a long time, you will observe down liquid milk and an up of the milk there floats cream. Correct? So butter is produced from that cream and cheese and yogurt they are produced from the liquid milk okay so this is the first and basic difference now in butter also there are two types one is sweet butter and second is cultured butter now what is sweet butter it's a butter which is produced without any microorganisms added to it but in cultured butter microorganisms are added that's why the name that is culture of microorganism therefore cultured butter now did you get the difference in between these two okay let's see the difference between yogurt and cheese we'll first go by how yogurt is produced the first step in yogurt production is boiling of milk then the second step is lowering the temperature so that it becomes warm. Remember, it becomes warm, not cool. And after the milk comes to warm temperature, we add our desired microorganisms. Now, one thing to remember is never write that we added the microorganisms in boiling milk. Because if you add something, then these microorganisms in boiling milk, they'll get killed. Okay, so remember th this thing, boil the milk, let it come to the warm temperature, then add the microorganisms. Now, which are the microorganisms that we are adding? First, it's Streptococcus thermophilus and second is Lactobacillus delbrueckii in 1 as to 1 proportion. What is 1 as to 1 proportion? 1 as to 1 means if you add 1 gram of lactobacillus, you will add 1 gram of streptococcus. If you add 2 gram of lactobacillus, you will add 2 gram of streptococcus. So that is 1 as to 1 proportion. That is in same same proportion. Now, after adding these two, what happens is these two perform some function. For example, what function is performed by streptococcus? It performs a function of conversion of sugar into lactic acid here streptococcus is performing this function and lactobacillus due to lactobacillus what it does is it gives a particular taste to yogurt if you have tasted the plain yogurt you know what i mean nowadays there are also yogurts available in some flavors like strawberry flavor mango flavor so it's not the basic process these are added these flavors are added just for the different taste so this is how yogurt production is done the more important thing when yogurt is produced on industrial scale along with the milk the condensed milk powder that we get is also added to increase the protein content so what will happen we will get more proteins for the nourishment of our body now let's come to the cheese production in cheese the milk is used not the cream. So the first step is addition of lactobacillus and streptococcus. The second step here, the most important step in cheese production is addition of rennet. Rennet is an enzyme. This enzyme is obtained from gut, that is from the stomach of cow buffalo. But Nowadays, people are becoming vegetarian. So vegetarian people 
won't consume the things that have that have uh, in them the products like something from uh, stomach of cow or buffalo so the alternative used for rennet nowadays is protease enzyme these enzymes are obtained from various fungi now so what we can use in the second step rennet or protease now what is the function the function is it separates the milk into two parts the liquid part having whey proteins and the solid part having casein proteins what we need now we have seen cheese is totally solid so do we need the liquid part no so what we do is we separate the whey protein that is the liquid part and throw it away now what we need is in the cheese production the thick part the curdled part having casein proteins now these things we have obtained the next step is addition of salt adding the salt is also very necessary step in cheese production after addition of salt the next steps are like washing pressing and cutting so what will happen we'll get the thick cheese that is the solid cheese now again the last step is ripening depending upon the ripening there are various types of cheese they depend upon whether the cheese is ripened for 2 3 months or over years or few months there are various types like cheddar cheese cream cheese etc the different flavors to the cheese are due to different microorganisms used now there are lactobacillus and streptococcus strains they can be different uh, many different strains of the same microorganism even in the fungi for that is in the protease enzyme different fungi can be used so depending on which fungi which microorganisms are used the tastes differ and even on how ripened the cheese is even on that also the taste differ thank you so much